Hi, this is Eric from MyAnnual.net, helping you understand and manage the annual inspection process. Visit us at MyAnnual.net for more information. Today we'll be removing and replacing a tire on a Cessna 172. First of all, think safety. Make sure the aircraft wheels are chalked and you have your safety glasses on to prevent flying debris from damaging your eyes. Gloves are also a good idea since we'll be working with solvents. To remove the wheel from the aircraft, we first must remove the two bolts holding the brake caliper on the brake disc. These bolts are usually safety wired to each other, but in some cases, where there are no holes in the heads of the bolts, the safety wire is omitted. If the safety wire is present, cut and remove it. The two 7 16 inch bolts then can be removed. You can now jack up the aircraft, making sure that the other two wheels are chocked so that the aircraft won't roll when you jack it up. Remove the cotter pin from the wheel nut. and remove the wheel nut. And the wheel should slide off easily. Once you have your wheel assembly on your bench, we can remove the valve core and let the pressure escape from the assembly. Remember to wear your safety glasses when working with compressed air. Once the pressure has been relieved, we can disassemble the wheel halves. Different wheel halves have different uh, assembly methods. This one disassembles with a quarter inch Allen fitting, to which you can either use a socket fitting to remove or a T-handle. Remove these bolts. This, bolt, this wheel off of another Cessna actually has a half inch bolt that goes all the way through it. And you use two deep drive sockets one on each side to break the nut loose and remove it. Once we get all the nuts out, we'll disassemble the wheel for cleaning. Now that we've relieved the pressure inside the tire, we're going to break the bead between the wheel and the tire. I've left one bolt in each side of the wheel so that when the bead breaks, the wheel will stay together. You can purchase this bead breaking tool uh, from one of our suppliers or uh, you could go to a wheel tire store and they probably break the beads for you. Uh, an alternate method would be to use tire irons between the tire and the wheel. Twist the tire irons to break the bead. If you do that, be careful you don't mar the inside of the wheel because that's where the tire seats to the wheel. Small pressure will break the bead. You flip the tire over, do the same thing on the other side. Once you've got the wheel disassembled, now we're going to clean the parts so that we can inspect them for any damage. Any solvent is okay, any approved solvent. Make sure you clean all the parts thoroughly so you can check for wear, cracks, or any defects in the parts. We're going to clean the wheel halves, the axle nut, all the bolts so that we can inspect them all, and then we'll go into cleaning the bearings. Now that we've got our wheel parts clean, we're going to pack the bearings, clean and pack the bearings. The first part you take off when you're cleaning a the bearing, there's a snap ring there. What I like to do, clean the parts as I take them apart, lay them down on your clean paper towel in order so you know how they go back. Snap ring. Then there's a felt seal that goes in. It's a metal ring with a felt seal. 
Again, you can use any solvent when you're cleaning this. Um, any approved solvent is fine. Make sure you dispose of your solvent properly. Uh, I just put mine in a, a gallon plastic jar, take it to the local landfill, they're happy to take it. If not, your mechanic has usually got a place to do that. Then there's a flat plate that goes right above the bearing. Again, if you clean these and lay them out in order, they go back real easy. You don't have to worry that you've got the correct order. Then the bearing. Again, right in the solvent. Scrub it real good. When we're done cleaning all these parts, we're going to blow them out with compressed air to make sure they're dry and clean. Uh, during this process, only always you can you can inspect all these parts, make sure that you see no cracks, dents, or dirty parts in them. Now that's half of the wheel clean, the bearings, and I know exactly how they go back in because I've laid them out in order. Now we're going to do the other side, same way. Now we've got all our parts clean. We've uh, disassembled the wheel, and this wheel is a three-piece wheel where the sides actually bolt onto it. Some of the Cessna wheels are just two parts where the wheel actually splits in the center and comes apart. We've got everything clean. We've cleaned the bearings. Uh, the goal here is to inspect everything, make sure there's no damage, no cracks, uh, we've got all the dirt out so the bearings will roll free. And now we're going to pack the bearings. Um, if you notice, there's two rows of bearing material here, um, and they're different from each other. The way that I keep this separate is because you want to put the bearings back in the same races they came out of. Is I always take the bearings out of the side that the inner tube valve sticks up and do them first, lay them out in order they came out, and then remove the bearings from the other side and lay that out. So now we'll pack a bearing. This bearing packer is real handy. Uh, it works real well and it's easy to use. Uh, you put the bearing down on the unit like that and then all you have to do is press down on the center. It forces grease up through the bearing. You can see it coming out here. All you have to do is just clean the grease out of the center and back into the wheel it goes. Now you can reassemble the wheel because you've laid out all your parts just like they came out. The washer, the felt ring goes in and then the snap ring goes on top of it. Now we'll repeat the process on the other side, then we'll be ready to reassemble the wheel. Now that we've got our bearings packed and back in our wheel, we're going to assemble the tire and tube so that we can put the wheel back together. The new tire and tube. Uh, before we put the tube in the tire, we want to put some tire talc in it. Tire talc keeps the resistance down between the tube and the tire so that it doesn't rupture the tube inside. Doesn't take a lot uh, and make sure you are using tire talc and not baby powder. Baby powder has an ingredient in it that will break down the rubber in your tire and tube. Just roll your tire around and evenly distribute the tire talc around the side. You'll notice on the tire there's a red dot. That's where you want to put your valve stem for your tube. So if you deflate the tube get all the air out of it, it'll be easier to insert. We'll insert the tube in the tire. Now we've got our tube inside the tire with the tire talc in it. Remember to keep the valve at the red spot on the tire. That's the light spot on the tire. The heavy point is the valve stem. We'll assemble the wheel back in the tire. Again, this is a three-piece wheel. Uh, most Cessnas have a one-piece, excuse me, two-piece wheel. Assemble the wheel back inside the tire. Put the wheel half on and bolt it down to the wheel. We'll repeat this process on the other side, remembering to put our disc in for the brake. Now we've got our wheel assembled. We've put the outside wheel halves on the center wheel. We put the brake disc on the back of the wheel, 
put all the bolts in loose on both sides, make sure everything is aligned correctly, and then we'll go back and torque them. The torque is 15 foot-pounds per manufacturer recommendation, and we'll torque these bolts across from each other so that we get a good steady pull on the wheel halves down to the center wheel. Once we've got all the bolts torqued, then we're ready to put our valve stem back in and inflate the wheel to the manufacturer's recommendations. Check your pilot's operating handbook to make sure you get the correct pressure. Now that we've got the new tire on uh, and the new pads on the brake, uh, it's a good time to clean the axle and the brake caliper before we reassemble it. Um, again, we can inspect it after we've cleaned it. Make sure that everything is clean and we've got no damage or cracks. We want to clean these pins on the brake caliper because it actually slides back and forth in the housing here. And we'll put some anti-seize lubricant on that to make sure that it does slide back and forth. Cleaning the axle, again, it's a good thing so you can check for damage. Uh, just a good idea to get all that old grease and everything off of it. We've got our axle clean and our anti-seize lubricant on the pins of the brake caliper. We'll replace the brake backing plate with the new pad. Insert it into the pins on the back. Put our wheel and tire assembly back on. And tighten up our axle nut. You want to make sure you got free rotation with the wheel. Good, and insert your cotter pin. The other brake backing pad with its new pad will go into the back of the caliper and reattach with the bolts that we took out with the beginning. Okay, the new wheel assembly is on. Uh, the axle nut is on. We'll put our cotter pin in the wheel. All the way through until it sticks out the other side. Split the cotter pin and bend the legs up to hold it tight. We've got our tire and wheel on, our axle nut on with the cotter pin through it. It's safety. The brake backing plate with the bolts holding the brake backing plate on. We'll now torque those to 25 inch pounds. And if the bolt heads have hole in them, we'll safety them. These do not. We've now replaced the tire, clean and packed the bearings, replaced both brake pads. Don't forget to make your logbook entry with the date and tack time that you replaced the tire and tube, cleaned and packed the bearings, replaced brake pads, and your part numbers for your parts. Make sure you sign it and put your pilot certificate number on there. This is Eric from MyAnnual.net, helping you understand and manage the annual inspection process. Visit us at MyAnnual.net for more information, a list of materials and tools needed to perform this and other maintenance tasks.